Welcome to the Sage Thought Leadership Podcast, championing the unsung heroes of business, accountants. Well, hi, everyone, and welcome to our podcast. I'm Ed Kless, and my guest today is Hatendra Patel. Hatendra is the president of the Global Financial Accounting Outsourcing Services of Datamatics Business Solutions, a strategic business of Datamatics Group. Hatendra's book, The Rise of the AI Accountants, The What, Why, and How of Artificial Intelligence for Accountants, has been bought by accountants from nine countries across four continents. Welcome back to the Sage Thought Leadership Podcast, Hatendra Patil. Thank you, Ed. Thank you for having me, and thank you for this opportunity again to refresh uh, a few things that have changed that may not have changed, and we're going to take a look at that. I'm sure this is going to be a fun conversation. Absolutely. And mm-hmm. since it's been a little bit of a time since you've been on, why don't you refresh our audience? Why do you do what you do? Uh, again, great question. My answer remains the same. Uh, it is an indelible part of my childhood, not childhood, young age memories. My father ran a business, uh, and the first time we really consulted uh, an accountant, consulted, not just took statements from them, uh, is when we ran into some kind of a challenge. And that accountant was able to pinpoint the problem in just 20 minutes. And I still remember me and my father looking at each other and like, why we couldn't think of that? And that uh, kind of told me, look, here is a professional that can change lives of the people in positive ways if you let them. So from that moment onwards, somehow I landed up in jobs and careers that I think now I subconsciously selected that I should be going out and helping accountants help more people. So that's what I love to do. And I'm so glad that I go to get those opportunities every single day. And why is it that you think that accountants are, are really finally starting to look afresh at their business model? I think have changed post-pandemic. Uh, obviously, there are problems and problems with talent shortage. Uh, you know, pick any statistical report. You see there are issues, not too many students coming in the accounting profession. Then I ran a research on CPA trend lines and uh, was surprised to see 42% of accountants and hundreds of them responded to that uh, research. Uh, 42% saying they are turning away new clients because of talent shortage. Then comes AI. And now everybody's like, okay, what's AI going to do? Is it going to be really automating things to the levels that we have never seen before? What happens to uh, know, our business? Will our clients use AI more and use accountants less? There's so much confusion in the market. And then uh, at the same time, if we are not able to cope up with this talent shortage and turning away clients, is it because of the business model? It's like, you know, there is a line of people outside your door willing to give uh, you their money. And you're saying, no, we, we don't have the capacity, despite AI, despite technology. And now we're talking of talent shortage. Something is not correct. And it's not gelling well. That if technology was really moving that fast, uh, so much automation, then we shouldn't be having so much of a talent shortage issue. right? So what is it? And then we see that, look, maybe our business models are the culprits. So I did a webinar with Ron Baker a few uh, weeks ago, and we touched upon this. So how do we charge for what we charge and what are we exactly selling? Is it the reports and is it the outputs or is it the outcomes and the impacts? And I think that is where it's going towards. More and more accounting firms are looking at you know, charging for the outcomes than just the outputs. Outputs is input equal to output, and most people are like, okay, this is all automated, you know, it's all bank feeds and things like that. What are you doing, Mr. Accountant? So that is kind of making at least a few accountants look at their business models correctly. Uh, the same research that I was doing with CPA Trend Lines also shows 71%, 71% saying they want better clients. Better clients want better outcomes from you. They don't want better outputs, not fancily designed uh, balance sheets, right? So that is where I think it's going towards. Uh, the more discussions I have with accounting firms, uh, the questions I always keep getting is, what's the difference between an outcome and output? So how do you define it? And how do you show that to a client? How does the client understand uh, that difference? You know, if you just send a, a balance sheet on email and be done with it, that's not uh, of any service to uh, the client because ultimately the client is going to look at that thing and draw that conclusions based on the numbers that they see. So the cognitive load is all shifted to the client. 
and they are not professional accountants to really know what the heck is you know the real intelligence in those uh, numbers that that you are uh, you are sending to them and then you talk to the client you look at uh, their things you give them actionable intelligence here is what your numbers say here is why the numbers came to be here is what you should do and here is why you should do it, provided you want to grow your business or you want to stop the leakage of revenue, whatever uh, that uh, aim is that you can find out. So from that angle, the business model of accounting firms uh, also reflecting in their pricing, which obviously we and me have talked about years now, the hourly pricing to you know, fixed fee pricing to subscription model and value pricing. And that is where it kind of shows, you know, I, I was also surprised to see the same research that I did three years ago. And now there is a huge difference. You know, the number of firms, you know, percentage of firms charging hourly fees has gone down by almost 20% compared to just three years ago. So fixed fee has grown up. Okay, what does that mean? The fixed fee is uh, the client thinks, okay, whatever I'm getting from the accountant, now I think this is a fair value. Then now I don't have to worry about a variable value. Right? So all of that is kind of coming together and making accountants think, look, maybe the clients now want something different. They're all seeing technologies progressing. They're all hearing about AI. Uh, the pandemic has really forced them to look at their dollars uh, pretty minutely. Uh, world economy has been in some sorts of challenges with supply chains and whatnot getting disturbed because of whatever situations, right? So everybody's looking at that and no other professional other than accountants can really help uh, the businesses the way they can. And if you change your business model uh, to help your clients more than just, you know, take information from one place and give it uh, in a different shape at another place, uh, that's not going to be helpful at all. So more and more accountants are uh, looking at these things. And I can simply say that, you know, based on just the number of times that accountants ask me about this outcome versus output thing, I know that more accountants are asking. So that, that kind of tells me that they are looking at their business models. Talent shortage uh, has also forced people to go for remote staffing and outsourcing and offshoring. Smaller firms exploring offshore outsourcing is not uh, an uncommon thing now compared to a few years now. Even that is changing. Uh, the same story of you know the, uh, the local staff here not wanting to do the grind work that accounting profession is very famous for. So that also tells, okay, uh, the people here getting into client-facing roles, doing uh, work that impacts the clients positively, that is what gives them more satisfaction. So let other work be done anywhere where people are motivated to do that kind of work. So it's becoming a global uh, profession for sure, irrespective of which country you operate in as an accounting firm. Just curious, did you ask them also if they uh, the, those organizations that have moved to a fixed pricing, are they have they gotten rid of their timesheets? Yeah, they do keep their timesheets. Uh, and what they say is the intent has changed, not from billing the client point of view, just to make sure the utilization is calculated correctly. Even that is uh, something of a misnomer in very progressive firms. They don't do that because they've already done whatever uh, you know, working they had to do. We know how much work we can do in a given period of time. But ultimately, we don't need to keep timesheets and then go and say, wait, this looks too much. Let's uh, do a discounting on that. Let's write off that time. It's just an uh, exercise that actually adds to the work. You know, So you're preparing maybe 5% of your time in keeping timesheets right? and then discussing another 5% of your time discussing whether there's a write-off. Right? So why keep it? Yeah. yeah, yeah, no, I, I, I think that's really the underlying cause. But okay. Hatendra, we have an exit question that we ask all of our guests, and that is, who is a hero of yours, and why are they a hero? My father, uh, no doubt, has been my hero for my life. Um, he used to be the regional sales head for a pharma company in India, and uh, a product was introduced for the first time in India called uh, oral rehydration system, and. Before that, everything was the drip in a hospital if somebody got dehydrated. And my father would carry cans of water infused with the ORS powder and actually demonstrate to doctors equal effect of a drip versus an ORS. And essentially, he was building relationships, taking the risk on himself to show that, look, this works, and actually demonstrating that and passing on that uh, intelligence and the benefit 
to the people that were supposed to treat the patients, you know, so that's the end thing. That's why I, I always relate that. I'm talking to accountants and accountants ultimately treat the business people. That is where it's all coming to. So I'm just following my dad's path. And lastly, Hatendra, how can somebody contact you? The best way to get in touch with me is on my LinkedIn profile. And I'm always there responding to every single message that I get, whether it's two o'clock in the night, I will do that. But that's pretty much uh, the, the place to find me. All right. And we'll put a link to your LinkedIn page in the show notes, as well as to your book, Rise of the AI Accountants, as well as an exclusive author that, that you've come up for listeners of the, the Sage Thought Leadership Podcast. So thanks once again for being a guest. Thank you so much, Ed, for the opportunity. Looking forward to talking to you sometime soon again. Review and subscribe by searching your podcast player of choice for Sage Thought Leadership Podcast.